Hey everybody, it's Fox with Foxio Games, and the next iteration of Windows is upon us, and this time it's a free upgrade for existing owners of Windows 7 or 8. Windows 7 is an excellent operating system in general, and after the updates that came with 8.1, so was Windows 8. Unfortunately, many people held on to hatred for Windows 8 due to the original integration of the terrible tile interface, which became nearly 100% optional after the 8.1 update. Other than the lack of a true start menu, there was no legitimate reason for people to hate on Windows 8. Regardless, people held on to their Windows 7 installations, hoping that 10 would bring them the next great numbered entry in the series. So is Windows 10 the next logical step for gamers, or should you hang on to your 7 installation and wait for the next one? Let's find out. First off, there's no monetary concern with upgrading to Windows 10 for gamers. You're a single user, and as long as you own a copy of Windows 7 or 8, you can upgrade for free to Windows 10. So basically, there's no financial downside. It's absolutely free. The two big questions that remain are, is it a solid operating system for general use? And is it a solid platform for playing your games? Let's start with the first question. Windows 10 is not a massive departure from Windows 7 or 8, but it does do even more to distance itself from that terrible tiled interface that was integrated into the original Windows 8. Like I said earlier, Windows 8.1 made the tiled interface an optional feature that you never needed to use, but now it's entirely gone by default. You can set Windows 10 to go into tablet mode, but for desktop purposes that would be pretty stupid. Windows 10 maintains the same awesome super search functionality that Windows 8 had. Hit the Windows super key and just start typing. Apps and documents start popping up right away for your selection. Alt-Tab is now far more useful, allowing you to see larger previews of open programs, and is almost like Mac OS X's expose. You can make use of multiple desktops, and while it's more stable as a central part of the OS, it lacks the extended functionality of some third-party solutions. Windows 10 has the same awesome performance monitoring tools of Windows 8, as well as the detailed file transfer windows. The whole OS sports a slightly more sleek and streamlined look and feel, and it brings back the start menu that so many people missed. To be honest, I never use the start menu. It's my opinion that a smart and efficient workflow will not make use of it at all. Use the super search functionality and taskbar to launch your applications instead. However, it's not all good news. Windows 10 attempts to forcibly automate many tasks that power users will want to control. Updates are automatic and you need to change a setting to prevent your OS from being forcibly rebooted against your will. You cannot pick and choose updates like in previous versions of Windows either. Privacy concerns abound, including a serious bandwidth issue. Unless you change it manually, your PC will be used to upload Windows 10 updates to other PCs across the internet, using up your valuable bandwidth and pushing you toward your data caps if you have them. You will need to change a lot of settings to ensure your privacy is maintained and your internet bandwidth is not wasted. I've included a link to a video from Red Gaming Tech that goes through all of the most important settings we know about at this time. It's down in the description. Make sure to follow his steps and includes using the Group Policy Editor as well as the Registry Editor. Don't forget to disable Wi-Fi Sense as well, which may unknowingly share your Wi-Fi password with other computers without asking you. I don't know why Microsoft included that, but they did. As for general non-game application compatibility, I haven't found a single application that refused to run or experienced any problems. Everything I normally use works just fine, including Audacity, Sony Vegas, Chrome, Firefox, Evernote, LibreOffice, etc. MSI Afterburner and GeForce Experience work fine, although Shadowplay turned itself off twice on me for no apparent reason. This also happened a few times on Windows 8 as well. So moving on to the second question, how is Windows 10 for gaming? After all, that's why you're here, right? Well, I tested a wide variety of games on my Windows 10 system. You can see just some of the games I tested by continuing to watch the background footage as I talk here. There are older and newer, modded and unmodded, AAA titles and indie games, OpenGL and DirectX 9 and 11. I ran into only three issues. When running OBS, which is Open Broadcaster Software, in streaming mode, I noticed problems running a few games, including games using the Source engine, such as Half-Life 2. This is a known issue, and hopefully the OBS devs will get it fixed in the next update. If you don't use open broadcaster software, then of course this won't affect you. As for game compatibility, nearly every game ran flawlessly. After the upgrade to Windows 10, The Witcher 3 required me to reinstall the Visual C++ redistributable file. The game wouldn't run until I did so, but instead of telling me this, it just failed to launch. Akiba's Trip, an obscure Japanese title ported from consoles, refuses to run no matter what I do. Others have reported the same problem as well. 
Other than those two, I couldn't get any other game to give me any issues. If you're having problems with a game, try out some basic solutions first before pinning the problem on Windows 10. If it's a Steam game, try verifying the cache. Also try running in different compatibility modes, maybe reinstalling the game. Ideally, none of this should be necessary, but if you do run into problems and you think you've narrowed it down to Windows 10 compatibility issues, please do list them in the comments section below. As for game performance, I didn't notice any significant differences from Windows 8 or Windows 7. While some games will benchmark slightly higher on one version of Windows versus another, none showed a significant change. One game might run a few frames higher on Windows 10, or a few frames higher on 7, or a few frames higher on 8. But again, nothing worthy of note. You should expect your games to run pretty much the same as your version of Windows 7 or 8. It's important to keep in mind that while DirectX 12 looks like it's going to give us some incredible improvements in performance, that's only going to occur in games that are designed to use DirectX 12. Some games run in DirectX 9, some run in DirectX 11, and they have to be programmed specifically to use DirectX 12, otherwise they can't take advantage of the benefits of DirectX 12. What this means is that all of your older games, unless they get updated with DirectX 12 versions, will not use any of the advanced features of DirectX 12. In conclusion, Windows 10 is a solid operating system with some great new features for users. Unfortunately, it is necessary to research the steps to take to secure your privacy and bandwidth against Microsoft's terrible insecure default settings. However, gaming on Windows 10 is solid and should give you the same general experience you enjoyed on Windows 7 and 8. Should you upgrade to Windows 10? Well, that's ultimately up to you, but if you ask me for a yes or no answer, I'm going to tell you, go for it. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I'm currently running Windows 10 on my gaming PC, my video editing PC, and my living room media PC. I haven't regretted the upgrades yet. If anything else does come up after uploading this video, I'll let you know on my Twitter account, so definitely follow me there, there's a link in the description. What's your experience with Windows 10 been so far? Has it been good? Has it been bad? Or has it been mixed? Please let me know in the comments section below, I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. And make sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it or found it useful, and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you guys next time.